Hello and greetings from Iceland, but it can be a bit complicated to bring you volcano news from my country, since some days I just don't know where to start. And this is one of those days, since we have one eruption ongoing, and at least seven other volcanoes showing signs of unrest. So I will cover all of them briefly today, with some new information of course. But uh, let's start with the good old uh, Geldingadalir that uh, started to erupt again after some exciting days. And the activity has been quite strong since it started again. So we have seen some good shows online, but uh, there is a new risk factor now, or the growing lava ponds out there. One of them bursted yesterday and sent some tourists uh, running, but it's all back to normal now. But regarding the tourists who visit the volcano, there have been many discussions in the comment section on my channel or about the people who are putting themselves in danger. And I want to say that in some cases it looks worse than it really is through the camera, but in other cases the valley of idiots is rising under its name. Like a few days ago when a tourist was climbing up on the crater rim and that's what we call crossing the line, because the line is unclear. And it is so because this is so special chance to see Mother Nature creating a foundation for the largest type of volcano that we can find on Earth, or a sealed volcano. So authorities are trying to keep it open as much as possible. So we have to put some trust in our visitors because it's either that or total lockdown. Since this is a large area and it is impossible to have it crowded with security guards day and night. We have however been lucky, very lucky actually, but as for the future it might be necessary to lock off some areas in front of the barriers because they hold back large bodies of liquid lava that can move faster than a human can run. And we got a good sample of that yesterday. And after all, this is a sealed volcano in the making and the eruption might go on for decades, creating way larger lava ponds than we see now. And the sealed formation can be seen very well in its 3D image, so this must be a thrill for scientists to observe this. So the Geldingadalur eruption is at its good old rhythm, but I want to mention that last night tourists started to call 911 and telling them about this new eruption somewhere far east of the crater. So we woke up our experts, and after a closer inspection, it turned out to be the moon coming up slightly reddish behind the clouds. So as we say sometimes here in Iceland, where would Icelandic humor be without the tourists? So I'm using the chance now to remind you about the polar swan mug that I made, because just the other day, a tourist found a polar bear in the west fjords of Iceland. And after we sent the helicopter to find it, it turned out to be a swan, like the eruption yesterday that turned out to be the moon. So the polar swan is on a mug now in order to support my travels around Iceland for my channel. But I will have to go to Geldingadalir soon, just like Lake Askja that is waiting for me, or the second place that I'm going to mention today. Lake Askja and the volcanic system under there is still moving. The land has risen by 10 centimeters when this video is done, and the uplift is constant, and according to our experts, 10 centimeters is a whole lot. So our scientists are now adding equipment up there to be ready for whatever might go on there in the future. But from where I'm sitting, I can see that earthquake activity is growing, but it's strange that it has been moving to north or northeast lately, or to an area where earthquakes have been very frequent for the last years. And again it raises questions about the connection between Bárðarbunga hotspot, Askja, and this place here called Uptippingar, like I pointed out in a time lapse, showing you the 2014 eruption in Bárðarbunga, where the question remains, is there a dike between those places? But anyway, it's a growing tension and uh, the aviation code was raised from code yellow to code red yesterday and a volcano discovery site picked up the news and uh, they didn't know that uh, there was uh, an exercise going on. 
so I am quite sure that many raised their eyebrows over it, not knowing any better. So those events are taken very seriously. And it is obvious that uh, this uh, possible eruption is getting the attention from uh, eruption enthusiasts all around the world already. And uh, we here in Iceland, we are very excited to uh, hear what our experts uh, say when they come back from Lake Askja. They are busy there now, but it's not just uh, Askja that is keeping them uh, busy these days. Just yesterday, we got uh, big news and our experts are saying now that uh, they believe that an eruption is imminent in Grimsvöll, one of the seven volcanoes that is located under the ice cap of uh, Vatnajökull glacier. But I want to start by saying though that we had a false alarm from Grimsvöll a year ago due to instrument failure, then we had another warning in May that uh, turned into nothing, and uh, that's when I made a video covering uh, more or less the whole story of this uh, remarkable uh, volcanic system. So I'm uh, leaving a link to that so I can make this uh, shorter today, but uh, with some new photos though. But the warning from yesterday was definite. There was no hesitation. And I want to say that there is no connection between the glacier floods we had in last week and the floods that we expect now. But here we are with the Vatnajökull glacier and it was the two cauldrons on the left that discharged in uh, last week, but to east of them we have Grimsvöll, or Grims Lakes, as it would translate. And uh, from this aerial view, we see the mountain ridge sticking up from the glacier, and this is actually just a caldera rim, and as we move down there, on top of the rim, overlooking the caldera, we have Grimsvöll. And the short version is that the heat under there is constantly melting the water that accumulates in a caldera and the water level is so high now that it has started to lift up the ice cover and very soon the water will start to flow over the part of the caldera rim that's still covered with ice, meaning that the glacial flood is imminent and such water discharge usually ends up with an eruption exactly here. Scientists say also that uh, there is a land uplift and other signs that say that Grimsvötn are very much ready for eruption and the water discharge will for sure trigger the eruption like uh, often before. And uh, due to the size of this uh, volcanic system, it's better to have those uh, frequent eruptions rather than a new lucky eruption which originated from this system in the year 1783. And you can see all about that in my older videos. So what we expect now is uh, the typical uh, glacier flood, which is followed uh, by an explosive eruption that could last for as little as a few days, perhaps a few weeks. We don't expect any major damage from floods, some road damage for sure, but the ass will as always uh, interrupt flights. But it's up to the winds how that will turn out. So those are strange times. One volcano already erupting and it is very likely that we will see uh, two eruptions go on at the same time. But then we have the other ones preparing and uh, we might have to wait longer for them. And I'm going to start uh, close by Grimsvart with uh, Öravjökull, the highest mountain peak in Iceland, over 2100 meters. And uh, Öravjökull can be very dangerous. It destroyed a complete district with uh, floods pyroclastic flows and asphalt in the year 1362 and changed the landscape around the mountain forever. The last eruption was in the year 1728. It was smaller but three people died when the meltwater swept away a farmhouse and Öravjökull started to show strong signs of unrest in the year 2017. The situation has cooled down though since then but the mountain made it very clear to us that this volcano is very much alive and ready for just about anything. And I'm not over with the Vatnajökull. Bárðarbunga, which is Iceland's hotspot, is uh, reloading after the 2014 eruption and it might have some connection to the action we are seeing in Askja now, as I mentioned before. But there is for sure a connection between Grimsvötn and Bárðarbunga. That has been uh, confirmed. And I remember that scientists told us after the 2014 eruption that uh, it was just the beginning of a chapter. Bárðarbunga would not bother to wake up for this uh, one single eruption we saw then. And uh, I believe they are right. There is constant uh, seismic unrest under Bárðarbunga and every 300-400 years 
she goes off on such scale that a large part of Iceland will suffer greatly for the years to come. Just like the next door uh, Grimsworth system is capable of, we do however believe that we won't see a situation of that kind for the next uh, 200 years at least, or so we hope. All we know for sure is that under Vatnajökull are the biggest threats from Icelandic volcanoes. So let's move on to Hekla. She has been ready for years and the deformation of the mountain is by far more now than before the last eruption in the year 2000. So she is more than ready. She has sent us some false alarms in the recent years, but still remains calm. But Hekla is always a ticking time bomb. And that brings us to Katla Volcano, which is long overdue, like Hekla. Katla is often showing seismic activity in the fall, after the summer has melted some of the ice cover from her. But the situation there is unusually calm. There are earthquakes under there every day, but uh, like Hekla, she is a ticking time bomb that hasn't showed us uh, a large eruption for over 100 years now. And I want to remind you that I have already uploaded videos about both Hekla and Katla, if you want details, but I do also have a surprise volcano for you today. Something new or a volcanic system that is named after a mountain ridge called Ljósufjöll. That system is about 90 km long and 20 km wide. The name is derived from the light color of the mountains, which can be traced to rock formations such as Liberate. This system stretches into the Snæfellsnes Peninsula, which is best known for Snæfellsjökull Glacier, and the Snæfellsjökull Glacier is best known for being a travel location in the story by Jules Verne, Journey to the Center of the Earth. But the last eruption in the system we are talking about now was in the 13th century, killing 80 people. And now we have seen some growing seismic unrest there. Nothing that I found reason to mention before because uh, this is Iceland and unusual movements are not unusual. But then just yesterday, one of our experts was telling us that it looks as the system getting ready for an eruption. But he added that it is most likely not going to happen this year and most likely just the beginning of a process that might take years to unfold. But the location is very interesting though, and there is however little information to get out there about this system. My guess is that uh, other systems and more active have been taking most of our resources for a good reason as you must understand. So as for me, this is just one of the tasks for the future, to gather footage from there by time. And this is in a wonderful region, one of my favorite places in Iceland. Snæfellsjökull, which we see here from the capital, has not uh, erupted for a long, long time. And from further away, the Snæfellsnes uh, Peninsula lies parallel to the Reykjanes Peninsula, only older and uh, not as active. But we started the journey here on the Reykjanes Peninsula, and we will end it also here today. And the bigger story of Reykjanes Peninsula is that uh, the ongoing eruption is just uh, the start-up of a new cycle that our experts believe that might last for up to 200 years, even longer. And uh, during this chapter, we will see multiple eruptions of different kind here and there on the peninsula. So the Geldingadalir eruption is just the beginning, and we might get a new eruption somewhere around the peninsula in the coming weeks or months, perhaps years. So the rest of the peninsula remains on high alert. And uh, with all this uh, activity going on in my country now, I was just wondering about uh, the time when I started my channel and uh, decided to make the ever-changing landscape in Iceland a part of it. So one of my first videos I made was uh, called What five Icelandic volcanoes are ready for eruption in 2020? And uh, I got it right with the Reykjanes Peninsula. Even it was a long shot. That video included a bad voiceover, so I planned to update it, but I was thinking about it now that uh, I would have to call it uh, something like what eight volcanoes are ready for eruption in 2022, and this is just ridiculous. And overall, we Icelanders are just uh, shaking our heads and saying what next and uh, where. And we have to bear in mind that we don't always get those uh, tourist eruptions. 
and the ongoing tourist eruption in Keltingadalir. Í þessa síldi vel kynn og það kútu grótus að sæls það eitt kútu þrettinu því capital region. So I will be moving back on the road very soon after this period of editing that I had to do. And my first stopovers will be Lake Askja and of course Keltingadalir. And with that I am sending you best regards from the volcano island Iceland.